Hello, everyone. We learned how to do marker prints just a little while ago. Those of you at home will only have the option of doing this one, unfortunately, unless you go out and buy block printing ink and the supplies. Those of you at school can definitely do this too, but I'm going to show you how we would be doing block printing um, prints this time around. So block printing ink is a little bit gross, only in the fact that it's kind of goofy, kind of yucky. It looks a little bit, looks a little bit like jam or jelly. It's kind of sticky because it needs to stay stuck to your print and it needs to stay stuck to the paper and your stamp. It's got to stick to a lot of stuff. So it's a little bit gross. It is very washable though. So those of you in school, don't feel like this is going to cause a problem for you. We need a roller, which is basically like a rolling pin with a handle something to move the ink around with onto a place that we can roll it out. And this is just a scrap piece of plastic. I don't even know what it's from, but it's what I used to print on. So I've got my stamp here and I've made a background to print onto. Those of you at school might have done this in oil pastels. Um, if you were in an art room that has a sink, you might have used paint. Um, whatever your background is, this is what I'm going to print my picture onto right there. So what I need to do is I need to set up my space here. Now, this is something at school I will probably help you all with because probably the hardest thing about making block prints is knowing how much ink do I use. So here's just a little bit. It's like a little, like a little smear of butter for a piece of toast. Here's my ruler. We want to roll it out as even as possible. Makes kind of a fun noise. All the parts of my roller. Can you kind of see how the roller's kind of shiny? Kind of, kind of weird. I'm only doing one print with this, which I am. This is probably enough. I don't want gloops and blobs of ink on here because it's going to sink into those places I carve. And that's exactly what we don't want to have happen. So I'm going to scoot this out of the way. I'm going to get my stamp here. I'm going to hold it down so it doesn't run away, you know, as frogs do. I'm going to start rolling the ink onto it. Did you have the ink is sticking to all the parts of this stamp that have not been carved? This is why carving your stamp deeply is really important. And why using only a little bit of ink is good. Now this is nice and dark. I want to make sure I get a lot of ink in my corners because that's kind of where Ms. Wales is holding on to it. Everything on here is black, which is great. And this is how it's going to look when it's printed. All right. So I gently pick this up like a pancake. Put my background down on here. Ooh, don't drop it, Miss Wales. And then I flip it over. Frog's very jumpy today. And I'm just gonna pat it down. You saw Kid Basie of Hound Saint do something a bit like this. Um, but I'm going to then, now that my stamp is a little bit stuck to this paper, I wanna flip it over. See, they're, they're pals, they're stuck there, but I don't wanna risk it. So I'm gonna put this here. And if you remember in the video that we saw, people use something like a glass paperweight to press the paper into the stamp. I have this ridiculous looking polar bear that I love dearly. This is what I use for fun prints and for like my professional prints because he just happens to be the exact right weight for this. So I'm gonna sort of press this into my paper. I don't wanna put like my full weight on it because I don't wanna crush the thing, but I wanna make sure that that ink sticks to the paper. So I'm going to do this for a little while. You can kind of hear it going over all those bumps on the stamp. And if you go overboard, that's fine. This is stuck to the stamp right now. And if I do this a little bit more than I should, the worst thing that's going to happen is that my print is going to look really, really well on there. Now, when you guys are in school, I will help you to make sure that you have enough ink on your stamp and not too much. That's the hardest part about this. And a lot of it is just getting used to working with this material. Actually, you guys probably can't see, but I can actually see some of the print coming through on the other side of this very thin piece of computer paper. I think, and I say this knowing that I could be wrong, but I think I've done this enough times that I think that this is okay. I think I'm done. I'm gonna give it one last once over with my finger. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. And very carefully, I'm going to 
remove the print from the paper. Ooh, jumping, it is a frog, isn't it? And there I go, I've got a frog. Looks kind of cool. And each one that you do is gonna look a little bit different. Um, the ink's on here nice and evenly, which is nice. This is a good print. And this is exactly what you guys can do. So these two prints that we did, that we've learned how to do from this block printing one to this marker pull, they're different. If I try to get my camera on both of these. They're different, but they're both really pretty awesome. They have different results, but they both look pretty cool. And you're gonna be able to do both of these in school. You might only be able to do one of these at home. Although if you hang on to your stamp, you run into Ms. Wales next year or Ms. Hetzel next year and you still have your stamp, we will definitely get you working with the block printing ink. Keep your stuff. It's not your fault you're home, okay? There you go. That is how we are gonna do our block printing ink. And then when you're done, of course, clean up your mess. There you go. Happy printing, everybody. <laughs>